Hello, this is Hawk Devine, and today we are going to be continuing the Bellaverse saga because it is interesting. Today's story will be called The Word. As you might have remembered last video, oh, the, the story was called The Book after SP1 million. This one is about The Word. And what's next? And maybe we might have to do another one after that. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I turn out the noise. Brother Al Aloy's face peers at me from beneath the hood of his robe. Father, the whole village is here now. I think they are ready for you. Brother Oler is my newest disciple. He is eager and devout, but timid. I have to teach him not to be so, if he hopes to be father when I move on. I rise from my knees. My meditation is complete. I don my robe and walk out of the space I have made my personal chambers. It is sparse. Inside is a bed of straw and a small table and stool. A wooden plate and a crude knife sit on it. The brazier in the center of the room warms the room. I do not need more than this to attend to my duties. I follow Brother Oler through the, the caverns. They were smoothed many moons ago by the people of my village into the stone halls I call my home. Torches light my way until I reach the great hall. It is a great chamber, carved from the rock by the water over many cycles. I can hear it trickling into the distance. There are many entrances to the great hall to deter those who would disturb me. The villagers come from one, and I use another. I have lived in these caverns for many years, know all the secret pathways and traps. As I enter, the flock turns to face me, and they drop to their knees and bow. I walk through the stone on, on teeth to my place in front of the flock. I look over them, their heads bow. They please me, for they, they, they are loyal, and have served me well, as I stand behind the wooden altar. I raise my hands and speak to them. Rise, my children. Hear now the word. We hear the word, they intone as one voice. In the beginning, they were the founders. Jealous of my power were the founders when I was discovered. The founders locked me in their sight to. None could reach me or bask in my presence. To find the secrets of my power, the founders sought to cut me open. The founders wanted my power for themselves. In their greed, they sought to keep me from the world. But one day, the Founders failed in their task. They could not lock up the Divine forever. The Founders discovered their pride had doomed the world. They tried to keep the ones like me under their power, and so died by the thousands of thousands. Despite their desperation, their efforts did not help them. Even as they died, they thought to control the ones like me. They tried to destroy us when they realized we would not permit them to exploit us further. Is this guy 343? Day and night the fires raged, until nothing was left to burn. The few survivors looked from the ashes upon what they had wrought, and they wept. They knew they had caused their own destruction. The founders had paid the price for trying to keep those like me in chains. The survivors knew not to repeat their mistake. They knew not to keep the gods trapped for their own greed, for in every way we are their betters in the hopes that it would be a better world. They began to rebuild. They had tried to destroy me on the eve of the death of the world, and they succeeded. My body torn asunder, my pieces scattered to the sand, and my pieces were lost until one day, many moons later, the day of, of discovery. The first father found a piece of me and could see my power immediately. When he saw me, he sought to revere me, for he knew godhood. He gathered more to him to rejoice in my presence. Their false gods were renounced, for even their power had not been enough to defeat me. Gear, the hoarder of knowledge, Drakgin, the, the destructor, Abert, the judgmental, York, the liar, all were tested against my power, and all were found lacking. <sighs> then, after many more moons, they found another piece of myself, and our divine mission became clear at last. Hand down from father to father, 
The word is truth. It is an old truth, older than the world itself. I had shared the word with my flock so many times in my life. The word filled the cavern, echoing through the spires where all my flock sat and stared and soaked in my voice. The look on her face was one of rapture, as I felt the power of the word flow through me. Filling me with radiance, I once again felt as one unbodied with my flock. No greed shall be, shall there be, no loneliness, nor fear, or hatred. When wish is complete, the sins of the self shall be washed away through unity. All shall be made one through myself. All shall be at peace when they are part of the whole. I turned back to the flock as they all rise from their seats and raise their arms in the air. There, sitting in front of me on the stone pedestal, are the pieces of myself. There is a piece of my body, my sharp dra of jagged, twisted in metal, the length of my finger. Next to it is my small black screw. The flock and I then, ra then raise our voices in unison. I must be made whole. Hmm. I'll be looking into uh, who this odd deity made of, I'm guessing, metallic things might be, but I have a feeling it might be um, Mechanite or Mechan. Mechanite is the people, not the deity. Anyway, we'll also be addressing the second. Because I think we still have time, yeah. We still have time to fill in, honestly. It's better this way if we just simply try to get through these as quickly as possible. Anyway. Addressing the second. Lord Hubris sits opposite Lord Wisdom. He is a type I Qatar, and his symbol is the crown. To his right is the unknowable, which is un invisible and colorless to only him, as he refuses to look upon it. To his left is the courageous, which is always a thorn in his side, as he refuses to concern himself with it. Betwixt he and the wise are the needy and unworthy, and he spits upon them and with his belly's acid, because he believes he is above them. The deva I tell us that he will never die, for their books and does not include him. Believe or disbelieve with them as you wish. Lord Hubris is of great cunning. It is said that with enough time he could always sway the council of equity into his, fev into his favor. His strength is like that of a hundred men, but he never need ex exercise it, for his voice is his greatest weapon. He appeals to the heart of man, so that in the depth of a battle they will switch to his side. The face of uh, Lord Hugh's Ubris is unassailable, for to look into his eyes and hear his voice sways his enemies' allegiance. Lord Hubris is deceptive and manipulative. That only Lord Wisdom is perfectly immune to his tricks. Despite that, he is always able to be on the side of the betrayer, and that he is always able to persuade the doubts of the ineligible. He is unable to change the opinion of the wise. I think Lord Hubris. Mm, I'm not gonna make that joke. Although it is kind of funny that that, that happened. I'm not gonna make the joke about it. Lord Hubris is of great endurance. It's so that he could be cut in twain. His headless half will come alive to struggle with him. But in combat, even as his moral phone strike blades into his flesh, he shrugs him off and speaks to him. Even when there are those who are particularly stubborn, the swaths of his claws will seal their fates away from him. Lord Hubris boasts, boasts that all at SP that are able, none can beat him in battle, as he will outlast them always. His opposition to the wise is unending and unyielding, for he believes the Devi that, that he will live forever. He believes he can sully Lord Wisdom's reputation, such that the other ten members of the council turn against Lord Wisdom and grant Lord Hubris his victory. Star Earl laments, Lord Hubris has the face of a ghost, but made with stone. It is like the whiteness of salt, but as hard as rock. He does not speak from his mouth, for his words pierce into the minds of those he is speaking to. It is said that the only time Lord Hubris changes his expression are in the memories of those who have spoken to him. 
The neck of Lord Hubris is long and sinewy, so that his face may always is look into the face of that which he is speaking into. Lord Hubris sheds blasphemies from his skin like sweat, and so to keep his face far from his butt, uh, the muffled sea whispers of disgust. His talents are innumerable and smeared with the flesh of those who did not follow him, as he is a wrathful lord. His spit is black blood, and those who touch it are burned by it. And when enraged, the draw all of Lord Hubris is said to come alive, and from words in the drops it leaves on the ground. Our elder twilight had told us that Lord Hubris had, had ex has existed always, but has not always been as he is today, and at time long for hours, he was instead two things, but have since become one, a visage made of horse slain, worn by the ancient Trask. Horns. No, poor slain. Sorry, I said the wrong word. Oh, dear. Oh! Don't lie to me. Anyway. My goodness. No, 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 there's internet. I just literally used it. Hmm. Oh well. That's... That's the mask. And it's okay. Anyway, that was um, two stories from the Battleverse. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I will see you tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!